A very good morning, good evening and good afternoon uh, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, whatever place it is you're tuned on to the Life as Signatures of Radio. It is a daily show focusing on the subjects of purpose, productivity and resilience. This uh, very morning, even as I was looking forward to making this recording, I got encouraged when I look at social media pages and I saw someone fronting a particular aspect of life very interesting aspect of life and he was saying something to the something to the tune that we don't think we don't take time to consider decisions that we're supposed to make in life there's so so much we can be able to do but we don't we just you know zero in we just follow through whatever we already know whatever has been handed on to us and when we're talking about in this episode in this new series we've been talking about raising spirit led children that's what we're going to continue talking about today We've got to realize that there's got to be a place where we've got to start being intentional and we've got to look at life from an adventurous perspective, not to be faithful to whatever we know, but to be faithful to what we do not know that is in the spirit of another human being. So we're going to continue talking about raising spirit-led children in the episode today. And stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So naturally, it's good for us to do a recap and uh, find out where we've been coming from, what we've already discussed over the previous episodes. Before I can even delve into the recap, let me do a recap. Let me do an introduction again of what we're talking about. Raising spirit-led children is an important subject, and spirit-led does not necessarily mean that it's a religious kind of a thing. It's a human thing. There is the spirit of the human, which is something that we cannot quantify, we cannot measure, which is the essence and the core of life of every one of us. That is where life happens from. And that is, in my opinion, I, I believe that is where life began even before we were born. When we say a child is born tabula rasa, that means the child comes with a blank slate. Necessarily, it doesn't mean that the spirit is also blank. The spirit of a child is full of um, direction of what matters to them. It's full of purpose. It's full of the things that are heavy, things that they are passionate about. They will not find necessarily those things here on earth. They come already loaded with them, with whatever is already on the earth in perspective. Now, when we're raising spirit-led children, that's where we're coming from. The other way is to be true to what we already know, what we've already experienced, what we've already uh, tried, proven, and tested. And in doing so, we forget or we starve the spirit. The spirit represents adventures. It represents growth. It it represents possibilities. It represents newness. It represents things that we do not know as of now. So we've got to be able to balance the two things. Now, we have said that you are not raising a spirit-led child, number one, if you do not teach them to cherish their inner compass. That's an episode that we did quite a bit uh, of uh, weeks ago. I'm not going to go back into it. You can scroll back and, and see where we discussed that. Secondly, you're not raising a spirit-led child when you, if you do not teach them the importance of self-extraction. Thirdly, you're not raising a spirit-led child if you do not nurture and nourish 
their creative capacities. And fourthly, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them the value of growth and personal development. And number five, that's where I've come to quite a bit now. You're not teaching, you're not raising a spirit-led child if you don't teach them to be human. We live in a very competitive world. It's like a dog-eat-dog society where people are looking at things. They use people and they love things instead of loving people and using things. And therefore, people are not human. And to be human speaks into the spirit. Today, I saw a very powerful quote on social media. Someone saying that we should teach our children to love each other at school because when they go back home, they don't get that kind of love. Very interesting stuff. So it, 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 it is the last point of being human that we've come on and we are going to continue clarifying these things. And in, in the previous episodes, we, we went deeper and talked about the selfishness, which is the opposite of being human. And we, we discussed some of those selfish tendencies and, and so on. And it's okay for us to discuss those things because if we're not careful, they become natural, become normal. You know, when we teach about competition, it's like normal. Uh, competition focuses on other people, not on you. Uh, if if you focus on competing, for example, and I'm saying that that in some degree, some level of degree of selfishness is in there. If you compete and you win, does it mean that you've exhausted your inner capacity and your inner potential? Not necessarily. So first of all, present culture is more of a selfish and self-centered culture than it is human. And it's becoming normal by the day. And I can prove this to you. Why is it that we are keen to do random acts of kindness when cameras are rolling? Isn't it because we have lost touch of being human? As in, I want to take selfies when I'm giving alms. Uh... I, I see this with politicians. I, I just saw a politician this morning trying to help someone who was impregnated by the boss and the boss fired them and they're trying to make a public spectacle of the same in helping and showing that they're human. You can do that when the cameras are not rolling. Today it is so pathetic to see what, what, what we're doing. Why would I want to record myself feeding children and post it on social media? Isn't that supposed to be a natural thing to do. I mean, why would I want to record it? Is it isn't it supposed just to ooze out of me? You know, I'm not even thinking about a camera. I'm not even thinking about recording. I'm not even thinking about posting. But it's become such a novel thing because it's not humane anymore. It's not flowing. That's why we've got to record it, capture the moment. It's a moment. You get what I'm saying? Instead of being a lifestyle, it's a moment. Wow. But I tell you what, the selfishness of the present age is so endemic and even the hints of self selflessness have to be milked for likes, have to be milked for reputation, have to be milked for sympathy, have to be milked for a quick back and for personal branding. That the only time you're going to be selfless is when your personal brand is, is on stake. You're not being humane. You, you're making this aspect of being humane to be transactional. The thing about this lifestyle is that it is increasingly becoming the way we do life today. In other words, if we will not be intentional about raising spirit-led children, they're going to ooze into the selfishness, self-centeredness, selfie taking uh, showing humaneness kind of a lifestyle which is so prevalent today we find them drifting into this selfish this transactional life without even questioning because they think that that's how life is supposed to be lived and when they get there they will not even realize that they are lost they will be far gone but let me tell you something you can see even in the kids themselves they they don't even figure that I've got to do this so that I can be able to show people. It's just a natural tendency that God has already put inside of us to be humane. And all we need to do is to nurture it and to grow it and to pursue it. There's also an element of selfishness which comes from the Adamic fallen nature which looks to 
continue being selfish and looks to outbox or outnumber the humanity that is inside of us. The spirit is always going to be hinting over and over again, beckoning us to do the right thing and to follow the right direction. What we need to understand is that when we teach or when our children learn as we are making them to learn, uh, we, we, we get to, they, they get attached to it so firmly, like it's super glue. Because there's the element of innocence and there's the element of trusting us as parents. So when they learn from us, either selfishness or when they learn to be humane, it sticks because we are attached to the environments and the cultures in which we are raised naturally. We can't, they, they say a, t- a tree, uh, uh, sorry, a fruit doesn't fall, fall so far away from the tree. So if we are raised in a transactional, selfish environment, that's how we easily become. And it becomes like you need deliverance, so to speak, to be a better person. That's why we've got to be intentional about raising spirit-led children who are humane. So we said in the previous episodes that the spirit of selfishness is a limiting spirit, number one. It's a spirit of scarcity, number two. It's a competitive spirit, number three. It's a spirit with negative energy, number four. And it's also an insatiable spirit. It never says enough. It never gets enough. And those are the things that we really need to cultivate against. We need to weed out those things. We need to weed out those things in that it's not an... We, we talked about this at, at length. It's not an, an idea of how much... It's, a, it's the idea of the heart. The, 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 the heart doesn't look at how much do I have left. The heart considers the other person and considers that it's an act that I've got to give. It's not a transactional act. It's not how much am I going to gain. It's not how much do I have so that I can be able to give. It's just that I've got to give. That is the spirit of being human. And we're going to go deeper into talking about the spirit of hum, uh, being human. And if, if we're talking about raising spirit-led children, we've got to learn some of these things and teach them these things deeper and greater. And that's what I'm going to do from the episode starting tomorrow. Because on the contrary of selfishness, there are characteristics on the contrary of these things of limiting, scarcity, competition, uh, negative energy, insatiability, they are actually you can flip it, you can reflect it. They are mirroring humane spirits or humane characteristics and humane tendencies that we need to start or continue to inculcate into the inner inner game of our children if we are raising spirit led children so tomorrow we go deeper into those one of them stay tuned and bye-bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring